Hey everybody, Andrew Zimmern here. Welcome to our YouTube channel. I am so excited about this. This is oh, one of the, the, the great dishes of my daily life. Uh, it's a Hunan style uh, chicken salad seasoned with hot chilies and a little soy and lemon juice. Um, and we use a couple of Japanese ingredients in here. And actually I have a Thai ingredient because I didn't have one of my regular Japanese ingredients to go in here. So, you know, I don't call it a fusion dish. It's just, I love the punch of certain herbs and they do have a version of perilla leaf, shizo, that is Chinese, but all the Asian markets carry the Japanese ones. So in an attempt to make sure that you're able to shop for this dish, we're gonna talk about a couple ingredients that might be Chinese in a Chinese salad. Um, the first thing that we wanna do is just let you know that this is a salad. There's a lot of different greens in here. There are a lot of spicy flavors, bitter flavors, citrusy flavors. When you blend them together, the flavor is unmistakable. And I'm also gonna teach you a poaching technique that's gonna absolutely blow your mind. Um, the first thing uh, that I wanna do is start to get rid of some of our leafy stuff that's around here. Um, so into our bowl, I love, you know, horseradishy flavors, um, mustardy flavors. So things like mustard greens, things like baby kale and arugula, which I've just sprinkled in here that have a real peppery flavor are what I love to use uh, for this salad. Um, we had some greens, uh, in the in the market today, at uh, at our Chinese market, I have in, we have some washed and dried water spinach. This is real ang choy. I'm going to use some of those leaves that are so beautiful. Um, I'm going to uh, use a variety of uh, mustard green called chili hon, uh, which is. Chinese, and I'm just gonna roll that up. There's some sturdy cabbage-y sort of components to this. Yeah, let me push that out of the way. Um, so this one I'm actually going to cut. You can actually see some of the stem pieces in there. It's absolutely delicious, great texture. Um, and I'm gonna throw this into here. This salad is for two for like a lunch entree. Uh, but obviously you can beef up any flavors you want. The, now that I put those mustards in there, it's just absolutely fantastic. Um, what other greens do we want to throw in there? Well, I've got some, some cilantro, some nice leaf cilantro, and I'm actually going to use those on the stem just like a green, right? I want people to bite into pieces of that. So, I don't want the big thick stems, let's discard those, but for sure, those smaller, more gentle stems and tips I want in there. And I always put shizo leaf in here, lots of them, because I love fresh shizo. However, there, were, there was none at the market today, that supply chain. Um, so I have some dry shizo that I'm gonna sprinkle in there so I get a little bit of that citrusy pepper hit that shizo gives us. And then I saw this, <laughs> I saw this Thai um, basil in there. And so we're just going to put a bunch of Thai basil in there because when you bite down on all of these wonderful little herbal flavors, it's just going to be so fantastic. Um, I love this stuff. Cilantro, Thai basil, mustard greens. Shizo leaf. They're just big, sweet, powerful. This one tastes a little licorice which I love, or licorice -y. You could put shallots, you can put scallions, you could put both. I've got some of those in there. Um, and then I want to make uh, my dressing that's going to go on here. So I'm going to grab a small bowl. By the way, yes, we are in, just a reminder, we're in my kitchen, this is my house. Um, the uh, people always ask, I, I love Gaganau equipment. They are my appliance company of choice. They just do fantastic stuff and top rate, really strong, powerful equipment. That's what's in the home. And Pustelli Cabinetry, which the most sustainable cabinetry company in the world. Uh, I love them. Uh, maximize space 
if you're doing a new project, I cannot insist on Pustelli enough. It's just remarkable. Um, so for the first thing I want to do, I'm going to put a little bit of brown sugar in a bowl. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of hazelnut oil. You can use pecan oil. Um, I don't use ses sesame oil in this. It's too strong a flavor. It just is. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of soy sauce in there. That's my salt. Obviously, recipe is on the website at andrewzimmern.com. I am going to, we'll talk about the spicy stuff in a minute. Um, I am going to put the zest of a lemon. I'll probably put it in my salad. And just, I don't want it to clump up. But I don't want the zest of the lemon to uh, hit that vinaigrette until you're about to eat it. Because I want a real oily, delicious, lemony flavor from the zest. And if it goes in with the soy and all that other stuff, it, it'll put its lemon flavor into that liquid, but you won't get to bite down on it. Look at how much lemon zest one lemon leaves. And quite frankly, that's what we're looking for. And I really do want you to go around the crown like I am and get all the zest off there. Then we can cut this lemon in half and we can add the juice of a lemon to our salad dressing. Sometimes you get really, really wet lemons with a lot of juice. Then you may just need a half. You be the judge. You know, I've made this dressing so many times. This lemon, decent. We're looking for about two and a half tablespoons. All right, whoever gets that one seed in their plate does the dishes. Um, okay, so we have this really simple uh, vinaigrette. It's wonderful. It's got oil, it's got soy, it's got uh, our lemon juice in there. I want something spicy. Now, I think the most popular ingredient in America right now is chili crisp, right? Which is, uh, there's a Hunan version, a Sichuan version, there's one that comes from uh, northwestern China that has a lot of influence from uh, other parts of the spice root, and so there's cumin in theirs. Uh, I make one uh, at the office. We make five gallons at a time. <laughs> we bring it on the road with us when we do food events, and we go through it quite a bit. So I always have a quart of my own chili crisp sitting around. I'm using my own chili crisp. The, the brands that uh, I love to use uh, is... You know, uh, Jing Gao, who is an incredible food entrepreneur, has a uh, brand called Fly by Jing, and her chili crisp is fantastic. Uh, Momofuku has just, David Chang has just um, come out with one. Uh, Chef Mei Lin, who is working out of Los Angeles, has a whole line of uh, condiments. I happen to think her XO uh, is the best I've ever tasted. Uh, and her, her chili oil and crisp is really, really delicious. I'm going to use a tablespoon of my own. And then I have two products that I always have on hand. If you love the flavor of Sichuan food, and yes, that this is a Hunan style chicken salad, uh, but there is red Sichuan pepper oil and green Sichuan pepper oil. Um, I love the spicy hit of the green. It's a little more numbing. So I just put a little bit of that in there. It is very, very, very hot, right? So there, I have my, I have my dressing. We're just gonna let that sit for a minute and uh, then I'm gonna whisk it together. I'm gonna taste it because I wanna make sure I don't wanna like blow someone out with too much heat or have my lemon oil soy ratio uh, be off. But I wanna show you something that I think is so, so, so cool. I'm gonna take my chicken breast that's been cooking. Um, I don't know if you notice anything funny about my uh, chicken breast. 
but I'm going to show you a little trick. All right, come on around here. If you want to chi if you want to cook a chicken breast and have it be super tender, so you can actually shred the protein strands. In fact, this was cooked so gently, there's no abuse to the exterior at all. You can actually see those protein strands. Do you see them moving in the direction my finger is? I know the light is kind of weird and all in here. But this is chicken broth, right? And all I do with my chicken broth is bring that to a boil. And then whether it's a two and a half pound whole bird that I'm poaching for a, a poached chicken dish, uh, whether it's Thai Khao Man Gai, whether it's a Hainanese chicken with you know fatty rice, um, I want that chicken to cook perfectly and tenderly. I actually do the tea steep method uh, that I learned a long, long time ago uh, in China. A lot of people have been turned on to it. We have a video for Hainan style chicken, I think, in which I showed people um, how to do this. But essentially, you bring the stock to a boil, which it's sort of about to do. I can see it moving. Then you drop the chicken in. You let it come back to a strong simmer and you turn it off. 20, 30 minutes for boneless chicken pieces, 90 minutes for a whole bird. And the skin doesn't shrink, the skin doesn't crack, it's mouthwateringly tender. You just let it rest when it comes out. It is, I mean, you can see the steam coming off of that chicken. It's just been sitting in hot stock that we turned the, the water off, the temperature off of. Now look at this, we're starting to come. This should come, it's a strong burner. This should come to a boil fairly quickly. All right, so that's a nice simmer. We're gonna put our chicken breast in. And when that comes back to a boil, which takes about a minute, you guys can go to the other side. This is, wait, a watch pot never boils, right? But I'm gonna show you that when this pot comes back to a boil, we're gonna turn, oh, it's back to a boil already. So I'm going to put that on there. Make sure that it's back at a boil. Oh, yeah, that's back at a boil. And I'm just going to turn that off. And in 25 minutes, that chicken is going to be cooked all the way through perfectly. Now, if you do an experiment with a chicken breast and you boil it at a, at a hard simmer or medium boil, um, the, the, it shrinks and contracts, the skin tears. It, it's, it, the chicken is way more gentle and requires a more careful hand uh, than you think. So I'm just gonna let that rest while we taste this. And then at the last minute, I'm going to pull the chicken with two forks, put it in the salad, warm, put the dressing on, God, that is beyond delicious. Wow. I love this dressing so much. And we're, we don't need a lot of it. We just want it to coat the leaves, right? And I do want to season it, though. It does need some salt. Oh, celery. That's what I forgot. Um, I cut up some celery, just it gives it, celery gives this salad a little more structure. In other words, those little alumets, those sticks, those match sticks, whatever you want to call them, of celery, give the salad some structure so it holds up on the plate. The other thing that I like to do is take the core out. So I have celery leaves. You can't call something Sichuan or Hunan without, especially with a salad, without celery leaves in it. I mean, just celery in general is used everywhere. It's such a strong flavor. I love celery and so do um, the Chinese, especially in regions where it's spicy because this, a celery, you probably don't think about celery as a strong flavor, but if you dipped it in 
hot chili oil and ate it, you still taste the celery. You still taste the celery. Uh, there are Chinese celeries as well as bespoke celeries like Girl and Doug Farm that I love. I order vegetables from them in the wintertime our winter time here in Minnesota. They have a rose colored celery that's delicious. I use it for braising, I use the leaves in cooking, but all long traditional wild types of celery that are not as cultivated as this one. Um, the problem is, is that there's not a problem. I like it. it's a little bit of bitterness and people complain about that. I like the bitterness. Uh, bitterness has been bred out of what I call conventional celery. So we have all this together and because I don't want to mix it too much with my dressing, you'll see how I like to plate this. I just want to give this a nice stir. That way it's so, so aromatic. Those mustard greens and the lemon, that delicious lemon zest. Incroyable, as the French say. All right. So, you can cut this with a knife. Super, super easy. Um, what I think is really, really, really more fun is to take pieces and shred it with two forks. And once you have shred like those top muscles, see how it just comes in ribbons of protein? Jordan Kahn, when he had red medicine in Los Angeles, um, did a uh, beef brisket dish where he actually just tore apart a whole brisket and then reconstructed it by the strands. Um, and I told him at the time that uh, I was in the kitchen with him, we were shooting for something. I said, you know, it's the same technique the Chinese use for... Uh, chicken salads. And it really is just a smart way to cook. Um, all right, find my strands again. I'm just holding this down and peeling it. You know, I just want to make sure I have strands, right? Nothing too big. And look, look at how different this chicken looks than your typical boiled, there's a piece of the tendon than your typical chicken for chicken salad in America, where it's cooled and diced and cubed and usually overcooked, and you need all that mayonnaise to make the chicken moist. And yes, I do this at the last minute, right before making it. I do not refrigerate. Once I've shredded it, I do not uh, refrigerate it. All right. We have uh, one of our uh, one of our chefs who frequently we have people when we're shooting lots of video come and support us uh, so that we're able to shoot in a reasonable amount of time. But uh, Matt, have you ever tasted this technique before? I have not. Alright, well come in here. You can take off your mask. Don't lie. Do not lie to the people. I wouldn't lie. Right? Oh, yeah. So that's what the steep method. We were talking about this for like an hour beforehand. That's what that gives you. And you just super, super simple. Right? So that's, that's a, that, that technique is a keeper, right? Absolute keeper. All right. Put this away. Super, super moist and yummy. Gently circulate this. And I'm actually pouring it mostly on the chicken. Because those leaves are gentle, right? Little tip to folks. Pour it on the protein. Now, some people like to take uh, noodles of some kind and fry them so that you have a crispy element for this or uh, make a potato crown for it. Potatoes are really big uh, in uh, Sichuan uh, cooking and a lot of other central and northern Chinese uh, cuisine. So, you know, potatoes and chili oil are one of my, my favorite dishes from that part of the world. But all I'm going to do is put this in the middle just like that. Maybe build a little more height 
make sure I have some celery leaves and chicken at the top. Make sure we have a little celery there, right? And then the way that I like to decorate this, super simple, dip back into my chili crisp. You can use uh, a prepared chili oil, of course, but just take the chili oil, just put that around the salad, if you like crunchies, you can fry noodles. It's okay to buy some prepared ones. I tend to like to not put those around the top. I just like to nestle them around the bottom and let everyone else sort of get a little crunchy vibe there. And you know, if you wanna take a nice little sprig of cilantro of course can i find one now that i need one no and just put that there as well don't feel compelled to put sweet potatoes red peppers and tomatoes in there not everything needs to be the like a vibrant palette of colors i happen to think all of these muted tones of greens and whites and light yellows and beiges with just that chili oil on there is absolutely perfect so let's see what we got here i want to make sure this is if i've led you down the path that is so fucking good Holy moly. Oh, by the way, get your skin checked regularly, kids. And, and wear your, your zinc oxide or your 50 on the sunscreen. Mm. That's so out of control, delicious. And by the way, note, salad makers, no dressing in the bottom of the bowl. The salad is dressed. I don't need the bowl to be wet, right? Salad is dressed. Don't need the bowl to be wet. Uh, thank you so much. Hunan style chicken salad, super easy. If you love to go to the Asian market and grab all these greens, great. If you just want to do it with a bag of baby kale from the supermarket, supermarket mixed with some baby, baby arugula, great. If you want to do it with that bag of pre-washed, pre-rinsed butter lettuce, go ahead and do it. What I insist you do is make it. Try this technique on chicken breasts. Get some of these oils. By the way, I don't think I told you, I get all of my stuff like this uh, from the Mala Market down in Nashville. I think they're malamarket.com, I think. I think so. We'll see, we're gonna tag them uh, in this with, uh, along with uh, Maylin and, uh, and uh, Jing's chili oil stuff. You should, you should know about their products uh, and David Chang's. Anyway, enjoy. Please make this. Let me know if you like it. Be well. See you later.